break out the Star Trek vibes because this green ink from Robert Oster is bringing back some nostalgia. It seems that I only get three types of green on the channel. The ones that look like oil slicks, the ones that look like bog standard green, and then the ones that remind me of the captain uniforms from Star Trek the original series. This one falls into that latter category. So look out, Urban, I have a feeling that this one may be in the running for one of your favorite green inks. So what is the deal with this ink? Well, it is the third of four exclusive inks made by Robert Oster for US-based pen retailer Pen Chalet. You've seen Antelope Canyon, as well as Monsoon Sky, which I'm going to have those linked down below. And this one, well, it carries that Arizona motif with a little bit of a prickly take. If you didn't know, a saguaro is a cactus that manages to survive the arid deserts of the American Southwest and extend into northern Mexico. I mean, that is when humans aren't being completely careless and burning down half the desert. <sighs> that said, let's get into the TLDW and take a look at this ink. As far as the color goes, I think that Robert Oster got this one spot on. The green reminds me perfectly of a healthy saguaro with a nice transition from those lighter tones over to the darker ones. Dry time on Tomoe was a little harder to stomach, but I feel that it was made up for over on Rhodia. Water resistance was also shockingly better than I was expecting, especially when you consider some of the other green inks that we've reviewed here over on the channel. And overall, I found it to be very well lubricated in the pen, causing no hard starts after my 1 and 10 minute uncapped tests. So honestly, this one is my favorite of the four exclusive inks. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the ink. First things first, let's take a moment to appreciate how much those transition tones just pop up from those golden mids. This ink isn't really meant to be a sheening ink, but I do like what it does in that transition into the deeper greens. It really does add depth to what you're putting on the page. The mids themselves are a really nice lime color that has a heavy alt gold green feel to it without being a spot on copy. But it's on the right where I'd like to live long and prosper. In all seriousness though, this is very well done and the shade on the lighter side is very pleasing. And I think that one of the best things about it is that even a slow rider can see the full dynamic range that's going to be on display here. Before we take a look at the writing though, let's take a look at the dry time. Like I was saying in the TLDW, I almost wrote this ink off thanks to the Tomoe dry time, and I know it's just over 20 seconds, and it's not the worst ink I've come across, but it is something of note. On the plus side though, take a look at that dry time on Rhodia. It's easily sub 15 seconds with a medium nib. Not the best, but definitely good enough to make it a good performance. Now let's take a quick look at that water resistance. When the water hits, we are getting a little bit of color lifting, but not as much as I was expecting. And once we get the water off the page, what was left is actually a pleasant surprise. The gray ghosting layer underneath was completely unexpected, and for it to be as bold as it was, really made this ink a candidate for my keeper column. So now that we've taken a look at some of the key performance indicators, let's finally see how this ink looks coming out of a pen. So first up is Tomoe. As you can see, if the pen has been sitting for a few minutes and it has a good feed, the initial word or two is going to start off more towards the deeper lime mids. After that though, this medium nib with my slower tempo is settling into a good mix of Star Trek gold and lime. Now, I did the dry time sample after doing the writing sample, so as I was writing, for some reason, I actually thought it was drying quicker than it really was. And I think that part of that has to do mainly with how quick the wet ink blends into the mid-tones and mimics the transition deeper greens. And you can sort of see that as I continue to write, the portions that have had time to dry, while they do show some nice shading properties, don't really cross over into the transitions like I would prefer. Out of a broad or double broad though, I have no doubt that these deeper greens would show through. Most importantly though, on my paper of choice, I'm getting that nice healthy saguaro green from start to finish, and I honestly find it to be an overall pleasant writing experience. Moving on over to Rhodia, we definitely get a better look at the darker mid-tones, and with how much quicker the ink is drying, it's giving us more of a uniform shading profile compared to the wider gamut that we find on Tomoe. Keep in mind as I say that, that this applies more to slower and mid-tempo riders. Faster riders are going to have to write with a fire hose to get out of those lighter golden greens on either paper. 
so keep that in mind as you shop for your inks. If you're a fast writer that likes a nice light gold green, or you have a pen that can keep up enough to give you some dynamics, then yeah, give this ink a go. If you fall more into the same category as me, however, then this ink is going to give you some really nice character and plenty of personality. For me though, my favorite combination of this ink would have to be a bold nib and over on TR. And that's gonna do it for this Pen Chalet exclusive Robert Oster Saguaro Green. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click on that Patreon link in the end card if you wanna support the channel. Till next time, don't drink the ink.